We begin 30 years ago today with an American tragedy. The liftoff of the space shuttle Challenger from a freezing cold Florida to the cheers of the young students of the first ever teacher astronaut. There they are. Moments later, full throttle, in the point of highest stress, the cheering stops. The horror sinks in. In that moment, seven Americans with the highest hopes, a billion dollars worth of the highest technology, gone in seconds. Was the worst disaster in space program history. Dan Rather anchored the coverage. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Never before in 25 years of Americans in space, never in 25 launches of a space shuttle had a life been lost. Today, that record went down in flames. Tonight, the search for survivors turned up none. The search for answers is just starting. Bruce Hall begins our coverage of a spaceship that became a fireball and a national tragedy. The deaths in service of their country of hero astronauts and hero teacher. It was a very happy and confident crew that departed for the shuttle this morning. Future astronaut Krista McAuliffe said they had gotten over the frustration of the earlier delays. Actually, and technicians had an apple for her moments before she uh, actually entered the shuttle. Uh, but the crew ready. had to sit on the pad for an extra hour while NASA took a close Coming look up, at the uh, ice that formed during the night in the freezing temperatures. There was concern that some of that ice launch. could strike the shuttle the, during uh, liftoff. Water is, uh, Finally, after a detailed in ice inspection, Three, the word was two, given, go one. for launch. And liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. It was the first launch from the newly refurbished pad 39B in more than 10 years. NASA officials say they saw no indications of any trouble or difficulty prior to the horrifying explosion. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. Oh my God. The explosion appeared to destroy Challenger. The solid rocket boosters emerged from the fireball, continuing to fly uncontrollably for several seconds before plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving a trail of smoke. Coast Guard Lieutenant Dave Baird watched the explosion from aboard a commercial jet. Basically, it looked like it just tore itself to shreds and, and was uh, on fire. And it looked like a, a kid's uh, airplane being uh, hit by the wind. And it, 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 was a, it didn't appear that anything could have survived uh, from our vantage point. The Coast Guard immediately launched an emergency rescue effort. But all that was found were small pieces of debris scattered over a wide area. NASA officials put together an investigation team this afternoon, but gave no indication of the cause of the explosion. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. NASA sources say the immediate attention is being focused on what appeared to be fuel or vapors that appeared around the solid rocket boosters and the main fuel tank a second or two before the explosion. NASA bristles at suggestions that they launched the shuttle under pressure today. There was absolutely no pressure to get uh, this particular launch off. Uh, we have always uh, maintained that flight safety is our top priority. NASA officials announced this afternoon they are suspending all shuttle operations until there is some indication of the cause of the explosion. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. The explosion was front page news with Newsweek posing the question everyone wanted to know. What went wrong? The nation was stunned, left in mourning. It would be one of the toughest days of Ronald Reagan's presidency, but he would rise to the occasion, canceling his State of the Union that night to console the nation. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and 
slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. An investigation would later blame the disaster on a failure of an O-ring. The breach allowed gases in the external fuel tank to mix, leading to the explosion. The seven astronauts were memorialized across the nation. They even had an elementary school in Cocoa Beach, Florida, named after them, called Challenger 7 Elementary. That Challenger speech by President Ronald Reagan was worthy of the nation's highest office. Uh, and I remember very vividly, Christine, being in school when the Challenger exploded. I think for our parents' generation, the Kennedy assassination was something that they remember from their childhood. This was ours. I remember in the, being in the classroom. And what I loved about Ronald Reagan's speech, not a, lot, not a lot of people know that that speech was written by Peggy Noonan. And she borrowed some of those phrases, touching the face of God, slipping the surly bonds of earth from a poet and an airman, an American airman who died when he was only 19 years old in a plane crash. And it's just interesting that uh, she borrowed those words and we all remember it as Ronald Reagan's now. Yeah. A really moving. Well, moment. it was a time when we all used to stop whatever we were doing and pause to watch these launches. That's right. Um, it was a very memorable time and it really did grip the nation. It really did.